The fight in the Bay of the CIA, Magneto and Sean was fantastic. Tornadoes blow away the CIA, their boats, and then Magneto uses the anchor to smash through the whole ship, crashing through windows and walls a mess. That was really thrilling. It was epic, it was huge, and it had fluent, flexible camera movements and fast editing. Also, Magneto originally moved barbed wire and bro broke people's guns and kicked them, and was quickly sh and it was quickly shot and edited as well. The whole scene uh, in Emma Froth, with Emma Frost in the house of the Russian general. That was incredibly complex and exciting as well, but especially the attack on the CIA headquarters where Sean got shot at by at least 20 cops or agents whatever and by a missile launcher and used the power to blow up the whole room and this henchman teleports past soldiers getting shot at while stabbing them and then taking a machine gun moving it to shoot through one window while a storm blows over the other side smashes everything and throws a guy through another window and people are being dropped in the air to crash into glass windows it is very complexly shot it has fast editing it is a freeway fight with windows shattering the whole building blowing up dozens of people shooting stabbing rocket launches large explosions this was one of the best action scenes in the whole series. It was fantastic, epic, complex, and also near the end, Magneto pulls a whole submarine out of the water, and their plane gets stuck in a tornado, and a whole submarine crashes on the island in great detail. And the Soviets used a missile to blow up one of their own ships, and that scene was very detailedly shot and edited as well. It was very fluent, used, ex used extreme close-up shots, and focus shots, and dragging shots, and also very epic was the part where Magneto launches uh, hundreds and hundreds of missiles back, and they all explode mid-air, and we see many of them individually turning around and breaking. That was really complex and detailed as well. And also filmed Mr. Adam complete the action scenes of the younger X-Men were lame, but they shot one of the guards, and Magneto just breaks a wall behind the guy to push it against him, and the teleporter takes them up in the air but they grab him so he can, has to take them with him to land safety as he cannot teleport independently and he grabs Havoc Fig with his tail and he shoots lasers over the subs and Angel shoots poisonous fire at them and Benji blows her away and he has to fly top speed dodge subs saves Havoc gets hit on the wing touches the water he blows himself over the water onto the beach where a precise laser hit takes Angel down and then Beast hits the teleport and Mystique distracts him and he punches him out it was explosion packed fast and you really got a sense of the great heights and how they still have uh, uh, human senses and nearly crash and have to work to aim. It was gritty and tangible and fluently shot with fast movements that focused on the characters, heights and the editing was fast and sudden. Also the action furthers the story, with the opening causing Sean to be discovered and Xavier to train against him and to realize mutants like Magneto needed his help, and Sean invading the CEA, leading him to recruit Angel. The fight in Russia led to them discovering Sean's plan, and the fight at the end stopped Sean and prevented World War III and showed Xavier growing as a teacher and how much the mutants had grown and how they worked as a team and stood by the humans, yet the humans mistrust them and nearly destroy them, and we see how fragile the human state is with how quickly war erupts. And now the blockbuster buster has disagreed with me three times, so now he's out. He's on my target list. You know what that means. I will unsubscribe from him. Oh, oh wait, I want to see his reviews on 4.2 of course, because that film he might like, he might think it's an improvement on 4.1, but he might think it's even worse, because I, I don't know what the film is going to be like yet, it still has to come out, but it's going to be interesting what his take on it will be, as he had such a unique take on 4, not totally hating on it, but subscribing to the view that some people held, that, that it wasn't that good, and in fact somewhat calling it overrated. And of course, I want to see his reviews of the Die Hard sequels in the original, because he called it a masterpiece, and I think that's the kind of blockbuster he can really appreciate. Mm, I know, I will dislike this video. <laughs> no, the, the points were good, so that wouldn't really be fair. I mean, I can't just hate on somebody's video because he disagrees with me. I guess I will just burn him alive. Fucking lame. The film has great atmosphere, it can really be energetic and colorful, but also suspenseful and spiritual and silent, and the acting is magnificent of almost all the actors, and the praise for it is deserved. James McAvoy is fantastic as Xavier, he's intense, he can be witty and exciting, but also serious and dramatic. He can be comforting, principal, a cautious, set of work, but also colorful, cocky, arrogant and obnoxious. He really gets the warm smiles, as well as the mentally voiced and the stressful looks, as well as his cockiness across, and play the sadness in the end extremely well. That was a very intense scene. Also, he reminds me of Seth Breath. Yeah, he loves thinking about his ballet classes. He excels all the other gals. Sorry. <sighs> the guild again. Michael Fassbender plays Magneto very well. Even when the character is badly developed, the performance deserved all of its praise. His voice and his expressions are great. He's intense and obsessed. 
dramatic and also creepy and sad and Kevin Bacon is fantastic. Filmmaster Adam was right praising him. He's intense, arrogant and slimy and rude. Presentational, seductive, power hungry, sadistic and also real intellectual. He gets the smooth and arrogant matters. The sadistic voices was the power hungry and hateful looks across very strongly. The Bullock Buster Buster complained that he was recognizably Kevin Bacon but Samuel Jackson was clearly Samuel Jackson in Dart with Vengeance or even any of the Marvel films he started, and Liam Neeson was himself in Batman Begins. If the performance is great, you may use it more often. The criticism of, oh, the, guy, the guy's just playing himself, is used very arbitrarily. I'm really gonna put that on my list of arbitrarily used criticisms whenever it's convenient to use them, but not using them when you actually like the film, along with the it's cliche and show don't tell and it's boring because you have something deeper in their criticisms. Now, I'm going to try and avoid a Samuel Jackson reference. But just know that if you dislike First Class, I will hunt you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Jennifer Lawrence is awesome. She's sweet and instant, yet intense, insecure, and nuanced, and multi layered, and also angry, lustful, supportive, and sad. And she's so hot. I would like to tie her up and spank her and call her a bitch and then have a fun in and out. Like described in the. I'm sorry, I, I, I just got done watching a club of orange. Yeah. Rose Byrne is also great. She has a hot ass, nice tits, and oh wait, I'm, I was supposed to be talking about the acting in this part, right? Yeah, again, A Clockwork Orange. By the way, most people call that a masterpiece, but that film is a lot more crude than what I... I'm, I'm, no, really, j just watch Clockwork Orange. I'm going to... Yeah, okay. Well, she gets really the professionality, her caringness as well as the naivety and the sternness across. And Nicholas Holt is also fantastic as Beast. He can first play the shy cult, but also intellectual and love struck and conflicted Hank while perfectly placed a more violent, angry, yet tough and depressed Beast. And so Graffitz can really play her frustrations, toughness and sexuality for her well, and is very subtle and detailed. Caleb Landry Jones is also great. He's energetic, playful, and immature yet. Karen Lucas still funny, dry, and very obnoxious, yet likable. And now onto January Jones. Although I didn't mind Emma Frost's character in here, her facial expressions and delivery, as many have said, were unconvincing and wouldn't, and she often seemed bored and distracted. Now, onto the technical aspects. So, almost all of the acting, with the exception of that of January Jones, was great, and the direction is also very intense and energetic, with fluid movement, and the setups are really detailed with complex framing. It uses fast close ups, and it's character centered and emotional, very spiritual with making parts of the shots vague and changing focus, adding to the hypnotic feeling. It can also be quite a character sentence with the use of shot reverse shots and still camera movement. And the cinematography can be very contrasting and dark. Dark and dramatic, but also mo for moments of romance, colorful and with the CEA, colorful yet ordinary and common. The lightning can be suspenseful, but also brooding and also soothing and optimistic. And the scenes with Sean, it's very dark and bleak and hypnotic, yet it can be very comforting and, and ordinary in the CEA scenes. And it can also be very colorful in, with, in the scenes with Xavier, but when Mystique is struggling with her conflicts with Hank, it can be very dark and brooding in the background, very shadowy. And the editing is fast with very smooth but fast and jetty cuts and often we have split screens adding to the energy and that can also be slow and character centered the set design is really detailed and complex and warm in our heroes their home with soft furniture and coloring cold and robotic for the eugenicist sean's headquarters with cold steel glass and only gray and the cea office being very vibrant with detailed elaborate rooms with loads of screens and tables with fast corridors and loads of equipment it's vibrant and energetic and professional the props are really great and realistic as well they can be comforting and advanced with xavier's team and still within sean's hideout the costumes are detailed and elaborate. Those for Magneto and Sean are dark and self-indulgent, and Xavier and his team uh, uh, have, uh, as intellectuals, have a lot more tight and professional clothing. And those of his team are colorful and, and energetic, fitting for teens. The sound is sharp and intense, fitting the epic story and intense emotion. The music is fantastic. It's energetic, epic, romantic, intense, dark, rhythmic, and very epic. The special visual effects are amazing, just wonderful. The CGI is just fantastic. The water fluid, the submarines uh, are incredibly detailed. The water is really fluid. The missiles are harsh. The explosion is colorful. The lasers lively and the screams natural. The wings organic. The gills moist. The skins rough. The um, hairs smooth. The crystals reflective. And the digital stunt doubles fluent. The stunts are relaxed. The stage explosions intense. All the movements and stunts feel real and have force and mass. And I need to pet this review just a little bit, so, um... Yeah, it's funny, Constantine will be the first pope when he is never spoken of with the title or active as a bishop by anyone from his time till the Protestant time.
ever. Nobody discussed Paul Constantine as Pope or Bishop of Rome or Bishop of Bishops. There will be secret text in the Vatican proving this, which they got from their imagination, I guess. Cyprian, in fact, about 20 years before Constantine was even born, spoke of Peter's throne in Rome and Fabian, who sat on it, who was replaced by Cornelius. Okay, now I am fulfilled. Yeah, that was cheap. x -Men First Class was a mega blockbuster, grossing $353,624,124 on a $106 million budget. It sold very well in home media and did fantastically well in rentals. It got great critical reviews by many being considered better than X-Men Lost End and X-Men Origins Wolverine, and by some even considered better than X-Men. And it got 87% of Rotten Tomatoes with the consensus with a strong script, stylish direction, and powerful performances from its well-rounded cast. X-Men First Class is a welcome return to form for the franchise. It got a 7.9 on IMDb, and it's got great audience reactions 88% of Rotten Tomatoes' audience ratings. And it got great fan reactions and also a magnificent reputation, although so far it has had very little cultural impact or impact on the superhero genre. It does seem to have been kind of forgotten by people. And a lot of people do claim it's overrated, especially fans and some notable critics. I think its praise is completely deserved. I also think it deserved to have some people say that it wasn't perfect, but I don't think it deserved to be called overrated. I think this film is great, although I do think it is still the least in the series. Don't kill me! And not as good as X-Men Lost stands for X-Men Origins Wolverine. Please, please, please don't kill me. Those films were unfairly hateful, but that problem has been dealt with in my early reviews, and that doesn't change the fact that this film is great. But that people hated on Wolverine and, uh, and The Last Stand, that problem has been taken care of. Remember how Vlad used to impale people on spikes? Yeah, he was a witch. I made him watch Redacted, which really is bad even for leftish propaganda. Yeah, you miss the spikes, don't you? So, it was a great production and it is a fantastic film, although flawed and the least in the X-Men series. And so I think it is fairly rated, it is great and deserves its praise. So go see it, I give it a 9+. Plus. And now, to those of you who think this isn't positive enough, well, let's agree to disagree. Oh, and to those new evangelists, have a nice day. I got you a pet as a present. Yeah. Bye.